before dawn on the 16th of July, 1945, at Almogordo, New Mexico, an event took place which was to change the world for all time to come. The Atomic Age was born. It all began at the Atomic Energy Commission. Scientists there knew that atomic radiation could keep food from spoiling because it could kill the bacteria that spoil food. Chickens were fed irradiated food to determine whether nutritional vitamins, fats, starches, or other food elements had been destroyed. These tests proved that there were absolutely no harmful effects to the chickens. The free world must have armed strength. The free world must have it now, not in reserve. Not later, but now. We must have men, ships, planes, tanks, and bombs on hand, ready for any emergency. What's it like, Chaplin? First of all, one sees a very, very bright light, followed by a shock wave, and then you hear the sound of the blast, and then it seems as though there's a minor earthquake. And then you look up and you see the uh, fireball as, as it ascends up into the heavens. It contains all of the rich colors of the rainbow, and then as it rises up into the atmosphere, it uh, turns a beautiful, pale yellow, and then uh, assembles into uh, the mushroom. It's a wonderful sight to behold. Oh, the shark has pretty teeth, dear, and he shows them pearly white. And the AEC has figures, but it keeps them out of sight when the shark bites with his teeth dear scarlet billows start to spread strontium 90 shows no color but it leaves you just as dead the united states knows that if the fearful trend of atomic military buildup can be reversed, this greatest of destructive forces can be developed into a great boom for the benefit of all mankind. Animals had passed the tests, and the next and most important test was scheduled. A family food center to store atomically irradiated food. You, radium, you, radium, you, radium, you. Uranium, I'm gonna dig us the boy. Oh, be, oh, Gonna dig uranium high on the mountain top. Hey, gonna dig uranium high on the mountain top. When the pants are full, the baby in love, love, love never stop. Hey, packing up the bow up.
We realize that when these multinational corporations come into the Black Hills, we're going to have uranium mining and uranium milling. We're going to have possibly nuclear power plants. We're going to possibly have high-level nuclear waste disposal in South Dakota. It has not started here yet. The hills and the trees are still there and the people and the living things. We have a chance here to stop it cold. And we have to, we have to save these sacred black hills. We're talking about our mother, which is the earth. One night I had a horrible dream. It, I, um, I was in bed and we were gonna have a melt, it, we were gonna have a meltdown. And we all um, left in, in a hurry because we weren't sure what was gonna happen. And the um, roads were kind of crowded and everybody was going like 100 miles an hour to get out. We were at school just getting ready to go for lunch when everybody started leaving one by one and we wondered what was happening. And then the teacher told us that they had an accident at the island. Something happened with the cool rods and that it, the water started to heat and it, it just got overheated and it started, something broke down or something, I'm not sure. Another leak came out of TMI and we had to evacuate. They say they're gonna open it in two years. I don't want it opened ever. I think of holding my breath and then you won't get radiation unless it leaks through your skin, which I don't think it would. It's something that you can't see, smell, or anything like that. And it's in the air and if, if you get too much of it, like it could cause leukemia or cancer. If they open it, they're probably gonna push the wrong button, pull the wrong cord, and switch the wrong switch, and it's gonna blow up. The meltdown was so terrible that some people died, and some people were badly injured and couldn't get anywhere, and the radiation got them. And then we, we came back a few years later, and everything was destroyed. There were gr giant holes in the ground, and TMI had big holes in it. I am ion, the neutron batter, trying to break up matter. But atoms have a strong makeup, they don't want to break up. We live in an age that's nuclear. Just what that means to some is unclear. You know, I've heard that nuclear power plants are just like bombs. No, they're not. The way the plant is built and the way it operates are very different from a bomb. Besides, there are all kinds of controls and safety things built in, so it can't possibly behave like a bomb. When we're talking about 100 tons or so of material, melting 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit and burning explosively, melting through concrete in the soil. When somebody tells me, but we're sure it isn't gonna go far away, I look at them as a chemist, and I say I have heard various forms of insanity, but hardly this form. Whether it melts down or doesn't melt down, you've created an astronomical amount of radioactive garbage. 
which you must contain and isolate better than 99.99% perfectly for the future, in the future I mean forever. We have moved far to tame for peaceful uses the mighty forces unloosed when this atom was split, and we have only just begun. This energy is to propel the machines of progress, to light our cities and our towns, to fire our factories, to provide new sources of fresh water as it brightens our life on this planet. Now, what was your first reaction to seeing the NU Tower? The tower was distinctly the symbol which was probably going to have to get removed in order to get a movement going here in the valley to stop the nuke. I just thought that it just stuck up there so succinctly, you know, that uh, I just knew it would end up tipping over. And by February 22nd, and yet still no one had done it, and we had never gotten really any kind of movement off the ground to stop the plant in the local area, I just figured it was time. It, it made this, like, double wanging noise that carried up the cable. It did it, it repeated it twice, like, wang, wang. I just had to tell people that the raw gamble that was being handed to the citizens of Franklin County and ask them if they wanted to send Sam Lovejoy to jail for five years when they confront his act with the nuclear power plant reality, the concept of jail, should this person go to jail? It's your children as well as our children that we're concerned about. You've been asked to leave. Yeah, trespassing. Yeah, well, children come before private property. I guess it depends. All right, well, I'm trying to tell you about radiation and unborn children as it causes their legs to be We're leaving. Deformed. And that's why y'all worried them last year. And that's why they ain't got nothing left to do to you but bring the tanks out now. When you got nerve enough to go to jail. First time in the history of this country they had to bring the National Guard out to a jail where people wasn't trying to escape. <laughs> They didn't understand that. And poor folks and black folks across this country related with you and understood you better then because for years, poor folks and black folks always thought jails was for them. And when we look around and see where a group of whites that's not poor that didn't have to stay in that jail decided, I will stay because we're going to stop this mess. It meant a whole lot to a whole lot of people. Just give me the warm power of the sun. Give me the steady flow of the waterfall. Give me the spirit of living things as they return to clay. If you took two billion dollars that it would cost to build a modern nuclear power plant, and you divided that $2 billion into the 200,000 households that there are in the state of New Hampshire. That is enough money to put a solar-powered space heating system, solar-powered domestic hot water system, and a wind-driven electric generator on every single one of the 200,000 households. And I can't imagine what kind of an army of carpenters and tin snippers, lasers, plumbers, and all the rest that it would take to go out and fit out these houses. That's where the jobs are. Here in San Bernardino, California, we're installing solar skylight water heaters. We're installing them on public housing for low-income people. Developing, designing, and manufacturing, installing, and maintenance of solar systems are fairly simple. We can do it, anyone can. Just give me the restless power of the wind. Give me the comfort and glow of a wood fire. But please take all your atomic poison power away. I'm asking the Atomic Energy Commission to speed up the licensing and construction of nuclear plants. By the end of this decade, we will have developed the potential to meet our own energy needs without depending on any foreign enemy, eh, eh, foreign energy sources. 
the people of the American state, the people of South Dakota. It is up to us. We are going to have to make a decision. And that decision is, do we want to live, continue to pass on to the coming generations values of hypocrisy, values of greed? Our people have always looked to the future at least seven generations ahead. The decisions that are made by our people today, we have to consider how is that going to affect seven generations from now. In the past, we have never been able to come together to deal with these issues because of the separations of age, sex, class, and race. But no matter which category that we fall into today, the nuclear madness is going to destroy each and every one of us. If we want to survive, if we want to fulfill our natural role and the natural part of the creation, we are human beings. Our only duty, our total duty, our obligation is to protect the sacred Mother Earth because this is what gives us our life.